the barbershop show. We are live here from Carter's Barbershop in North Lawndale. I can tell my cab driver today, Richard, that we are in North Lawndale. So what neighborhood is this? <laughs> like exactly. You're the cab driver. Before you got there, while you were going? While we were on our way here. No, we were right down like a couple of blocks away. And he was like, what neighborhood is this? And he's like, and wait, but then when I told him I was on the other said, isn't this, uh, isn't this where the vice lords were for? Can you go there? <laughs> he went there. So it took me a few minutes to get the shot. We had to have a little conversation. I did talk about Naomi Moore's new book, though, The Body Peace Foundation. So, so that was a good little conversation. Not a problem. Not a problem. So if you want to get in on the conversation that we are having, because we are here every single Friday and have conversations with the cat, conversations on the air. But you can join it by calling us at 888-635-1112. My cat driver is probably listening because I told him about the place. So you can find us on Twitter at Chicago Reporter. Yana, do you have some traffic going on over there? Uh, yeah, and this is actually traffic from Kimbrielle's Facebook. So we have Christine Scott. Um, she has two WTF moments. And the first one is the teacher in Georgia um, who used a slavery question to try and teach a third grade people's math. Christine says the teacher in Georgia should have been fired. How could anyone read those math problems and seriously think this was okay? And we're going to talk about that later because, yeah, that's my, one of my WTF. Really? I'll talk about it. Um, and hopefully no one was scooped here, but the second WTF is that Ariana Huffington told First Lady Michelle Obama that she should visit South Central LA and get more in touch with the people. So Christine asks, is she saying Mrs. Obama isn't black enough? And who still says South Central? <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. Well, it's our January Shop Talk show right here at the barbershop. Um, with us now is, again, once again, Kyle Hilton. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Richard? Because he's leaning back in the chair like, don't ask me another one of those questions. Uh, Evan Moore was with us and Suzanne McBride. Uh, let's move into the last part of our local news analysis. We've heard the stories you like, the ones you don't like. Now we want to know uh, what in recent news made you go WTF like the comments you just heard. Uh, okay, so uh, who wants to go first? Okay, I'll Because <laughs> nobody wants to okay. The one I was really going to go with was uh, kind of like, you know, there's a story that sometimes about people who are now uh, sleep texting. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a doctor from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine says when people are stuck between the phone and, and waking, you automatically grab your phone and it lights up and uh, you might say something. Oh, I do that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. He says, oh, if you leave your phone on at night, might be good idea to stick it in your backpack or whatever you day. So I might want to do that. But here's the other WTF story that really I thought was, this was in, I couldn't pass this up. This was in today's Sun Times. This, this was an oil park man who had a three and a half inch nail stuck in his head. Oh, I saw Actually, that. in his brain. And he didn't, didn't know. know. He didn't no. know. He was using a nail gun. He was doing some work at home in the garage or something. Uh, the thing hit something and it felt a, you know, like a, Sharp poke, yeah. you think? Um, and he had bruises on his head, but he didn't know the thing went into it. It went all, it, it went all, all the way through, through his, his brain. brain. Like they showed the so, picture last night. Was on huge. Wednesday, he uh, felt this happened on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, he felt a little bit nauseous. And he drove himself to the hospital. Uh, the X-ray showed he had a nail in his brain. He had uh, some immediate surgery. And, uh, and uh, of course, the surgeons, uh, they nailed it. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. It was pretty bad. That <laughs> actually removed the nail from me. Yeah, you got, I mean, sorry about that. to these stories, you got to look it up. I mean, this thing was dead center in the middle of his brain. Evan, I'm sorry. I, I, that's Homer. was very funny. <laughs> no, I, this whole, I would think that, like, that's Homer Simpson, like, it's just, <laughs> no. like, so, like, you just, <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So, Evan, would you, would you find this week? Well, it's not really a story. I was on the bus the other day because my car was out of commission so I was going southbound on Ashland and we got to the intersection and then I blew around and started back on Ashland and I was looking around hanging out and I saw an Arizona billboard of tourism on a billboard in Filson and I was just kind of like hmm, interesting <laughs> and I was like wow I couldn't, I couldn't believe it so I uh, obviously uh, well, what did it say like come visit yeah, it said something like Matt Nicholson or something like that. It said what? It said Matt, Nif Matt Nicholson, I believe it said. Arizona. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I immediately thought of that because, uh, you know, people in that neighborhood have very strong.
strong feelings about immigration and some of the strict uh, immigration policy that go on in Arizona, even go as far back as thing with the Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King holiday. And, um, I wonder who funded that billboard. I'm kind of curious. I want to go see it and just see who paid for it. Yeah, there's some research on it, and uh, of course, like I was saying, I'm kind of shocked when I saw it. But as I looked up to some research, did some research, I saw that outside of California and Texas, that's where they get most of their uh, their state is the way they get most of their uh, sort of tourists. Oh, really? Yeah, because a lot of people go out there for, uh, for the Catholic League, you know, for the spring training. So. Who would have thought it? Kyle, what was on your list? Yeah, mine was after the uh, uh, war remat. Immediately after that, Ron started speaking, and he talked about um, how celebratory it should be that uh, we went 24 hours without someone getting shot at. And, I heard that. And, 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 and when I heard it, I said, wait, 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 what? We're, we're, we're celebrating this? Is we, We've gone 365 days. 364 people have been shot at. Let's send a press release. So that's kind of my WTF moment. I mean, yeah, we, have, we, finally, we finally gotten our expectations to the bottom. Right? I mean, like, we've gotten 24 hours without somebody getting shot. Let's throw a party. I couldn't believe that he said that. I'm like, well, well, did he just say that? 24 hours. Although, my cynical self would say 24 hours without at least knowing somebody probably got shot. <laughs> 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 Someone else is reported to the internet. Yeah. 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 Well, I um, saw the press release this week that Judy Barr took Pinka's office, the state treasurer, put out. Um, just reminding us that, wow, we are really in debt in this state. Um, Eight and a half billion dollars is owed just in past bills. Um, and I just, my hope for 2012 is that state lawmakers and the governor and anyone else who's responsible for solving this will actually get serious and solve it, even if it means they might not win the election. It might actually be good for the state if we do something about these bills. You know, it was a political ad, but I thought it was so clever. Uh, the guy came to the door, did you see that ad on the Lady answers the door, she's a baby in the head. Uh, can you give me thirty thousand dollars and she says, No, I can't give thirty thousand dollars. I've done this, I've had to do that, but I don't know. So I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to you. I've seen it. Kids will have to pay. Uh, he was pretty clever when you watch it. Yeah, it's bad. I've seen that. So now, okay, so you're. Okay, okay I'm torn. I have two. Okay. I think I'm going to do both. All right, do we have time for two? All right, so uh, Christine Scott was commenting on my Facebook page earlier because, yeah, I wasn't sure what to pick. But anyway, the American teen, did you hear about this? This black girl from Texas was deported. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. African American. Um, this is bizarre. It's quite bizarre. If you haven't seen, read the story, you got to read it. But so she was, I believe, 16 years old, 15. No, she was 14, 14. actually, at the time. She was a runaway, and um, she got arrested. She was picked up by the Houston police on theft on November 19th, and her family didn't hear from her. She basically gave a fake name when she was arrested, and unfortunately it was a name to somebody who actually, I believe, had a worn out somehow, so she got deported based off of this name over to Columbia. So she was over there, I think it was in Bogota, and you know, she was working and you know, doing all these other things, and oops. She, said, she didn't even speak Spanish. She didn't speak Spanish. She's I mean, black, didn't speak Spanish, she went from all, Texas. She went through all the departments and nobody ever noticed that she was a black girl from Texas with a southern accent. Did you guys hear about this? Yeah, yeah, I did. I actually um, posted it on my friends' faces and they you know, said that that was their uh, WTF moment right there. And they read it. A lot of people didn't know about it. And it still bothered the mind like they were all through those channels, up to proper channels and you know, right? That's that I heard a Jacadrian, I think that was Jacadrian, I might be saying it wrong, Turner. And she, once she was convicted, she was handed over to ICE, where she still said she was a Colombian citizen. Apparently she was telling authorities, you know, I am Colombian, I'm Colombian. Didn't speak a lick of Spanish. By the way, 14. When, uh, when they determined they had made a mistake, uh, they said they were not even going to go there. Okay, so this is the other one. This one cracks me up. So my husband's from Georgia, and this story got out of uh, suburban Atlanta. So a teacher resigned after an investigation found that students were given math homework with word problems about slavery. The teacher apologized, and he's resigned, and what Chris was commenting on was that he should have been fired. This was the test, and the um, teacher's name, okay, Luis Rivera. Each tree has cookies and oranges. If eight slaves pick them all, then how much? He was teaching at Beaver Ridge Elementary School. Another question, if 
Frederick got two meetings each day. How many meetings did he get in one week? I think that qualifies as WTF. Oh, no question about it. Frederick, mm -hmm. I, 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 I mean, in addition to, to the rest, immediately if you'd like to think Frederick Douglass is one of the major mm -hmm. heroes uh, for African Americans uh, during those times. And just to even go there with that as a it's a head scratcher and a terrible. Kyle, what do you think? You, you would ever yeah, I'm just surprised it wasn't even Black History Month. I mean, it was, this was an even even attempt, right? <laughs> this is a, no, it was a joke. Too. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, he's he done in the education world. He might as well just try to put up with the trades. You can't no way. <laughs> as an educator, Suzanne. Well, maybe he can go into textbook sales. We hope not. I, yeah, I, I don't think so. But I think what's one of the things that Christine was, Chris was upset about was also why does a person like this, is he allowed to resign? It's kind of like the situation, you know, return all I got to you know. You've got to fire that person. You've got to go in here before you just got to go right away. Right away. Well, look, we're out of time. This has been episode 61 of the Barbershop Show. We're going to be live every Friday from the Friday's Barbershop. 3622 is Charlotte, which is probably brought down to the neighborhood. I want to thank our guest, Kyle Filmy, having more of the season of Brown Seed Magnet. Thank you so much. Today's program was produced by Sarah Lou and our engineer, the studio owner today. It's a Nick Vanderbilt. Uh, Yana Kulikov, uh, who's our online producer today. Find us online at Charlotte.com, mobile.org, and share your feedback. And so I will be in the email for the GSS and the GSS. And if you miss any part of today's live show, you can hear a complete rebroadcast this Saturday at noon on Bogolo 89.5 FM and Bogolo.org. You can also subscribe to our free podcast. Be sure to join us next week for more real talk straight from the shop floor. For Bert Downing, Richard Steele, and everyone here at Carter's Barbershop, I'm Kimberly Kelly. Thanks for listening. And in honor of Heather James, who just